been because I talk to a lot of lady landlords, landladies, a lot of future lady landlords. I speak to a lot of women in real estate and things they tell me are along the lines of, I need to do this, 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 and this, and this, and this, and this. I need this, I need this, I need this, I need this. I need to make this much money. I need to have this many doors. I need to have this many things happening. I need to have all this. And they are already doing like 18,000 different things. And they just straight up don't know how they could accomplish one more thing. So I want to talk about how you can stack your time or you can multitask or third option, you could hire someone to help you. So let's talk about stacking your time and what I mean by that. So right now I'm at the hair salon. Stay in your car, we'll call or text you. I'm at the hair salon and flip back around. I had two choices. I got here, I was wearing my mask. I walked in, we, uh, you know, Told her what I wanted to do, and she put me in the wraps, right? I'm in the situation right now. And she said, okay, you have to let that set up. You have to let that settle. I don't remember what word she used, but you have to let that cure on your hair for a while. And she said, you have two choices. You can sit in this chair over here. She said, I won't put the dryer on you because you got your mask on and you'll suffocate. So you could sit over here, or you could go out on the porch, and you could take your mask off. I said, or I could sit in my car. She said, yeah, you could sit in your car. I said, could I run and get some gas and come back? Because that was next on my list of things to do. She was like, yeah, that's fine too. So you always have more than just two choices, ladies. You can sit in the salon and you can read a magazine and you can chill. And for your mental health, that might be exactly what you need to do today while your hair is doing its thing. Or you might need to go sit out on the porch and breathe a little bit and watch the traffic go by and chill and maybe you need to make some decisions. You need to process some things while your hair is processing. That might be the actual word that she used. Fine, do it. But the third option is to get in your car, go run a couple errands, come back, and then keep going. Okay, I'm in my car right now. I could have a stack of yellow letters and I could go inside. I could be working on my yellow letters. I could sit on the porch and work on my yellow letters. I could do this video and see y'all right now. All right, I could do a lot of different things or I could just kill 20 minutes scrolling Facebook. I could take these 20 minutes and listen to a podcast, listen to an audiobook, okay? So what I want to tell y'all is that we all have 24 hours, but you need to learn how to stack your time. My dad uh, has heart problems, and he goes to the hospital once or twice a year to have some things done. And one year, I volunteered for the day shift to go sit with him because I knew I needed to get some yellow letters done. And if I was sitting at the hospital and I didn't have anything else to do, I would get those yellow letters done. I stacked my time. Technically, I was over there sitting with my dad while he was having some things done. And this is in 2014, he's fine, it's okay. But I was learning, even then, how to stack my time. I would go to my stepson's ball games and I would take yellow letters. I would take my green seller lead sheets. I would know that I needed to list properties. So I'd run around getting pictures and doing things. And then I would know that I was gonna be somewhere, not even in the office, but I was gonna be somewhere where I could stack my time and I could get some things done. I want you to learn how to stack your time. There are moments in the day that you could carve out a little bit of time and you could do a power hour. You could get a whole lot of stuff done. It just takes an hour if you focus on it. Because that brings me up to my second point, multitasking. I don't really believe in multitasking. Now, there are some times that I do multitask. Like Jason, my husband, loves for me to sit and watch ball games on Saturdays, especially during the fall. He just wants to sit and watch games and he wants me to be there and that's how we're bonding and we're spending time together and it makes me crazy. But what I did is I went to Bed Bath & Beyond and I got a lap desk so I could write my yellow letters. I could fill out my envelopes. I was gonna be sitting basically still for four to six to eight hours and I could get some things done. We go to the beach 
His parents have a beach house. We go to the beach. I'm in the car. I'm in the passenger seat for six to eight hours. I'm getting yellow letters done. I'm listing properties. I'm coming up with plans. I'm thinking through processes and systems that when I get back to my desk, I can do a power hour and I can blast those processes and systems into place. So technically, I guess you could argue that I am multitasking because I'm watching the game, but I'm really getting my yellow letters done. I'm driving to the beach, but I'm really riding passenger seat and getting my yellow letters done. Okay. I, I don't believe that you can truly multitask, but there are times that you could, I guess that is really what I would call stacking time because it's time you're going to spend in the car, get things done. You can, uh, there's softwares. I use buffer. I have these moments where I think of lots of things that I want to say on social media and then I buffer those posts so they go out over the next month or two. I'm riding to the beach. I get those things done. Otherwise, I got to carve out six to eight hours of office time to do those things. Don't multitask. Don't try, you know, well, women are great multitaskers. When you're making dinner every night, you're multitasking because you're boiling water for macaroni. You're peeling potatoes for mashed potatoes. If, you know, you're a strong pioneer woman like that, I would go buy microwave mashed potatoes and microwave mac and cheese and I would just put that stuff in the oven. But y'all are probably stronger women than I am. But you know, we're multitasking. We're doing lots of different things, but we're making dinner. So I know you can balance lots of different things. I know you can stack your time. I know you can technically multitask, but if you are focused on a negotiation, that's probably not the time to be blending a smoothie. I don't want you multitasking when you should be negotiating. You should be focusing on your sellers. You should be focused on one goal at a time. Do a power hour and get a whole bunch of things done that'll last for the next three, six, seven, eight hours or three, six, seven, eight days. You can do that. The third option is to hire someone to help you. There are lots of things to do in real estate investing. I have on my desk if I was at the office, I've got three tables filled up of little yellow strips of paper tasks. And some of those have six steps in that one task. Somebody needs to do that and it doesn't need to be me. Some of y'all are to a place where you can't physically, mentally, or emotionally handle more deals until somebody starts answering the phone for you, until you have some websites set up to do some of the heavy lifting for you, until you have some buffer posts ready to go out so that you can technically disappear from social media for a week because you're at the beach and you need a mental break. But people don't know. All right? You got to hire somebody to help you. Hire somebody to answer the phones for you. You don't need to be doing that. In the beginning, yes, you do. But once you get deals, you get money, you get rolling, businesses have people answering the phones for them. Big businesses work on a quarterly schedule, monthly goals, quarterly targets, all those things. And businesses have lots of people involved. Right now, you're a one-woman show. You're a one-stop shop. But I don't want you to always carry that load all by yourself. I want you to eventually get this process into place and give it to somebody else and let them do it. I want you to figure out that, you know what? My strength is talking to sellers. My strength is negotiating signing contracts with tenant buyers. My strength is managing social media posts, but not actually posting. I want you to see that... We need to focus on your strengths. So many people want to focus on their weaknesses. I don't want you to do that. I want you to see this is what I can do and only I can do to move my business forward. Not move my hobby forward, but my business. What is it that only you can do? And technically, you can clean the floors in the office. Sometimes you might want to clean the floors because some, you know, motion gets your thoughts to go in and then you're rolling and you're doing things and that's fine if you got a sweep that's fine but I don't want you to always be wearing 18 hats you deserve a break you make enough money that you can hire somebody else who actually enjoys doing that I can file all of my stuff but my mama used to make me file stuff and I kind of hate it. When I worked for her, I was in charge of filing and I grew to hate it. So I pay somebody else to do the filing for me now because that's not my 
strong suit. And that doesn't, I don't jump out of bed and say, yes, I'm going to go file stuff. No, I'm going to hire somebody who does jump out of bed and say, yes, I'm going to go file her stuff and get her organized because it drives me crazy when she's all scattered. Sorry, y'all. I'm kind of scattered, but there are people out there that don't want to do Facebook lives. They don't want to go negotiate with sellers. They don't want to be the brand behind the coaching. They don't want to do those things. You got to do those things. I got to go do those things. And then we're going to hire somebody else to do the other things that aren't lighting us with a passion. You do what you can do. Stack your time how you can stack time. I'm supposed to do a Facebook Live every day. Do y'all know that? Part of my job that only I can do on my team is a Facebook Live to tell women, y'all can go buy houses. You should be buying houses. If you want to make a real change in this world, go make some big money. I'm not talking about survival money. I'm talking about thriving money. Y'all go start making 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars a month and then you cannot tell me that you're not changing the world. You really want to change the world? Go make more money. People are going to take you more serious the more you can donate to their cause. People are going to take you more serious when you're buying a thousand plate dinners because you're hanging out with different people now. Guess who's making big changes? A lot of people mouthing off these days. Guess who's making big, big changes? It's the people that can write a check and not have to get out and do other things. Everybody has a place. Everybody needs to do what they need to do to push their movement forward. My movement is encouraging women to be real estate investors because then women get to make more money. When women start to make more money, the whole world changes. That's my movement. I fight that battle every single day, all day long. Everybody has a battle they're fighting and I have chosen that to be my battle and that's the one that I'm fighting. I fight every single day to encourage women to make more money because when you make more money, you get to make more decisions, you get to push your agenda more, you get to fund different projects that you believe in. So my movement is to get more women into millionaire positions. Yes, I want you to make five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars a month. But I don't want it to stop there. I want you to grow a portfolio. I want you to grow real generational wealth. Wholesaling's not gonna feed your great grandchildren. Wholesaling might feed your children right now, but what are you doing for the future? That's what I do. I help women stack their time. I help women do some minor multitasking, but to focus when it really needs to be focused on. And I help women see that they need to hire people to help them. I talk all the time that uh, my company, She Buys It. Let's see, I got my shirt on. She Buys It. She Buys It says, Proverbs 31, 16 says, she goes to inspect the field and she buys it. Every woman I know wants to be a Proverbs 31 woman. Me too. And I don't remember if it's the verse before or the verse after that. I really need to check. But one of the next verses says that she has jobs for her girls to do. Hire people to help you. Let people do what they want to do. Some people do get excited to type in spreadsheets. Some people do get excited to file, um, you know, leases. Some people do get excited to post your stuff on social media. Let those people live their best lives. Give them things to do. Pay them. Start businesses. Don't start hobbies. Don't be a hobby investor. Start a business, a big business, a business that all the old boys in town talk about because you are a force to be reckoned with. That's what I do. Hey, y'all. <laughs> My name is Whitney Nosley. I'm the broker for Whitney Buys Houses. I am the owner of She Buys It, and I'm the president of the Knox Rhea. I love helping women get their first deal done fast. If you have any questions, please let me know. I am getting the signal that it is time. My hair has processed. It is cured. Y'all figure out. Tell me in the comments. How can you stack your time? How can you do some multitasking but then focus when you need to be focused? And what can you hire other people to do? Hire your weaknesses. Don't fix them. 
focus on your strengths and let somebody else fill in the gaps where you might be a little bit weak. I'm here for y'all. Gotta go. Bye.